Now we're really close to calculating that all-important full production cost per unit. We've done steps 1, 2 and 3. So where are we now? Well, now all of our overhead costs are sitting in one or more of our production cost centres. So we were just left with step 4. We're now in a position where we're going to be able to calculate our production overhead cost per unit. And we call this our absorption of overheads into our cost unit. So let's have a think about the different ways we might calculate our production overhead cost per unit. Well, if we play with a couple of numbers, let's try and get an idea of what might make sense. So if we have a factory environment with one production cost centre, and our budgeted overheads for the cost centre are $100,000. And our budgeted production, so the number of units we are planning on producing in the coming year, is 20,000. Well, we want to find some way of dividing our production overhead cost across our cost units. So surely it would make sense for us to say, all right then, our overhead cost per unit is equal to 100,000 divided by 20,000. So my overhead cost is $5 per unit. Does that make sense to everyone? Makes sense to me. However, what if I gave you a little bit more information? What if I said that this company produces two products, product A and product B? And I told you that the machine hours per unit were five hours for product A and one hour for product B. Now at the moment we have said that our overhead cost per unit is going to be five dollars for both products. Well, does this seem fair? If it takes five times as long to make product A, then surely product A is more expensive to make. So we're going to use five times more power. Presumably, more of our maintenance costs could be related back to the production of product A, since we're going to spend much more time on each unit of product A. Suddenly, it doesn't seem quite fair to have the same overhead charge to each of these two products. And this is what we're going to find. For most companies, their overhead absorption rate, or their overhead cost per unit, is calculated using machine hours or labour hours because this is a better reflection of how the costs are incurred within the company and on a per product basis. So, we'll have to think about a couple of things. First of all then, our overhead absorption can be per unit, but is more likely to be by machine hours or by labour hours. And we'll have a look to see which one we would use when we get into a couple of questions. Now, calculating our overhead absorption rate, so our OAR, our overhead absorption rate, 
will be equal to our budgeted overheads divided by our budgeted activity. And we will always use this formula to calculate our overhead absorption rate. Where our budgeted overheads are the budgeted overheads for the cost center and our budgeted activity is either our budgeted number of labor hours or machine hours depending on which basis of apportionment we're using. So, we're going to look at an example at the, in a moment and the example we're looking at will be one where we have blanket rates. Now all this means when we have a blanket rate it means we have one overhead absorption rate for the whole factory. This will usually be the case where we only have one production cost center for the whole factory. So let's have a look at a question to see how this is done. We're told then that Tulip Limited makes a single product, the bulb, where each bulb has a prime cost of £20. In addition to that, it takes two labour hours and three machine hours to make each unit of this product. And we have some additional budgeted information. So we have our budgeted overhead costs as well as our activity levels for total output, labour hours and machine hours. And what we are going to do in this question is calculate what will our overhead absorption rate be depending on which method we choose. So we said the first thing we could do is calculate an overhead absorption rate on a per unit basis. So all we do is look at our total budgeted overheads and divide that by our total budgeted production. So if we calculate our overhead absorption rate on a per unit basis, we will get a hundred thousand pounds divided by our budgeted activity which in this case is our budgeted output of 20,000 and we get an overhead charge of five pounds per unit. Okay, so that's one way we could do things. Of course we know we could also calculate our overhead absorption rate by looking at the labour hours. And again, our overhead absorption rate in this case will be our budgeted overheads divided by our budgeted activity. But this time, our budgeted activity will be our labour hours. So now our overhead absorption rate will be 100,000 divided by 50,000 hours. So we get two pounds, and this time it's two pounds per labor hour. So for each labor hour we spend working on a unit of the product, we are going to charge two pounds in overhead cost. The other way we could do things is by looking at machine hours. So maybe we would decide to calculate our overhead absorption rate based on the machine hours we use. In which case our overhead absorption rate will be our budgeted costs of 100,000 divided by our budgeted activity. Very simple calculation, we get one pound then per machine hour. So for this company, there are three different overhead absorption rates they could use. Does it make a difference which one they choose? If you are nodding and saying, yes, it does make a difference, then you would be right. It's very important that a company uses an overhead absorption rate that is appropriate and is an 
a reasonable estimation of what the overhead cost per unit is. The reason is, of course, is the overhead absorption rate, which is cho chosen, will affect what the total production cost per unit is. And that, in turn, will affect selling price. So it is very important for a company to choose an appropriate absorption rate. In the next bit of this question, we are asked to calculate what is the total production cost using the unit-based absorption rate. So in other words, if we go with our first calculation and have an overhead absorption rate of £5 per unit, then what would our total production cost per unit be? Remember, production cost per unit has two components. It is equal to the prime cost per unit plus the production overhead cost per unit. We're told up above that each bulb has a prime cost of £20. So, our total production cost in this case, prime cost plus overhead cost, so £20 plus £5, so we would work out that our total production cost per unit is £25. That's if we're using a per unit basis to calculate our overhead absorption rate. What if we went with our labour hour rate? So if we decided to use £2 per labour hour as our overhead absorption rate. We want to work out what would we then have as our total production cost. Well, our prime cost stays the same. So we'll still have £20, but we need to add on what would our production overhead cost per unit be now. Well, we're saying we're charging our production overheads at £2 per labour hour. But how many labour hours do we use in the production of each unit? We need to look back at that other bit of information we had. So we are told that each unit takes two labour hours to produce. So our overhead cost per unit is going to be £2 per labour hour multiplied by two hours. So the number of hours we use per unit. So our total production cost then will be £24, which is different to the production cost we had when we were looking at our overheads on a per unit basis. Finally, we want to look at our third potential overhead absorption rate, which was based on machine hours. So if we charge our overheads on a machine hour basis, what will our total production cost per unit be? Again, our prime cost will still be £20, but now we need to add on our production overhead charge. We're charging now £1 per machine hour, and we're told in the question that each unit requires three hours. Working that through, we'll get a total production cost of £23. So we see, depending on which overhead basis we use, our total production cost, or our estimated total production cost, is going to be slightly different. So it's very important that we choose an overhead absorption rate that's appropriate to our company. Now, how do you know in the exam which one of these bases, bases to use to calculate your overhead absorption rate? Well, it's very straightforward. If we have a question like this where we have been given information about budgeted output 
budgeted machine hours and budgeted labour costs. The first thing to remember is that if you have been given information about machine and labour hours, then you do not calculate your overhead absorption rate on a per unit basis. So we would not use the budgeted output to calculate our overhead absorption rate. So all we have to decide then is are we going to use labour hours or are we going to use machine hours? And the very simple answer is you use whichever one there are more of. So in this company's case, they would use machine hours to calculate their overhead absorption rate. In this case, we say the company is machine intensive. It requires more machine hours than it does labour hours. So we assume that a bigger chunk of the overhead costs are machine related. So power costs, machine maintenance and so forth. If a bigger chunk of our overhead costs relate to machine type costs, then it makes sense to use machine hours when we calculate our overhead absorption rate.